This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Well, at the end of our second session together, I left you with a little exercise to do at home. That, of course, was example three here. Now, in example two, we got introduced to our hero, Billy. And Billy, as in example two, still has a trading income figure. Trading income being non-savings income amounting to £27,500. What's changed, of course, is that we've increased significantly the amount of bank deposit interest. And that bank deposit interest, i.e. our savings income, has gone up to a significant number indeed, some £25,000. So, running our two analysis and our total columns as usual, we get our total income figures. They being the sum total of non-savings and savings combined over here to 52,500. Now, of course, at this point, we do not yet know whether Billy has become a higher rate taxpayer. We only know that when we've established the taxable income and that demands the deduction of the personal allowance. Where, as always, do we deduct that personal allowance, first of all, against, of course, non-savings income? We take it away from the non-savings income, the trading income of 27,500, and that gives us £14,930. It also means that when we take it away over here from our total, it gives you, now there is an important number, 39,930. Now, 39,930, as you see there, is bigger than another important number. Now, I know it's bigger than a lot of numbers, but in particular, we are thinking about, I hope we're thinking about, our basic rate band limit of £37,700. So what that means is we're dealing with a higher rate taxpayer, a higher rate taxpayer who has savings income. And what that means, therefore, is that they will still enjoy a savings income nil rate band, but this time, it'll only be £500. It also means that the savings income is going to not just have a nil rate band, not also still have much of it, most of it, within the basic rate band, but a little bit of it, the bit over that total of 37.7 and up to 39.930, goes up into higher rate. So, how do we tax? Again, as ever, non-savings first. There it is, 14,930. All of it well within, of course, our basic rate band limit of 37.7. So all of that 14,930 will be at 20%. Now, again, an issue that we spoke of last time, but we are to deal with in just a few moments' time, is that not only do we, on our savings income, get to enjoy a savings income nil rate band, now £500, because Billy has become a higher rate taxpayer. But there was also that point about a 0% starting rate. But the 0% starting rate, as you've seen and will see again in the notes, that 0% starting rate will only apply to savings income if any of that taxable savings income falls into the first 5,000 of overall taxable income. And it doesn't, because we can see more than 5,000 of non-savings income is taxable. So that figure there, the taxable figure of non-savings income, if that is £5,000 or more, it means there will be no 0% starting rate. Only where that figure is less than 5,000, meaning that then some, at least, of the savings income falls within the first £5,000 of your total taxable income, only then will you have the 0% starting rate. So that's the critical figure here. What is the taxable non-savings income? If it's less than 5000 and we have savings income, then you're going to talk, look about, uh, about applying the 0% starting rate. So what have we got? We've got, as we've said, the 500 savings income nil rate band. Why? Because he is a higher rate taxpayer. We then got 14,930 plus 500 is what, uh, uh, 15,430. Take that away from 37,7. 
the basic rate band limit. And all being well, if the maths are correct, then that leaves a balance of basic rate band available to us of 22,270. Remember again, that savings income nil rate band eats up a part of the basic rate band limit of 37,700. Again, we had that point last time. So it pushes now of your total £25,000 worth of taxable savings income. It pushes £2,230 of it out of the basic rate band and up into the higher rate band, where suddenly we're now talking about a 40% tax charge. Now again, please do check to make sure that all of those numbers have gone through my calculator correctly as much as through yours and therefore we're looking at the same number. Again, you'll have read through, I trust, by this stage, the little notes at the bottom, that because Billy is a higher rate taxpayer, how did we know that? Because of that figure there, being in excess of 37,700. And that meant, because there is savings income, that a savings income nil rate band of £500 will be available. The savings income nil rate band of £500 counts towards the basic rate threshold of 37.7, i.e. we took the 14.930 non-savings, we then take the 500 savings income, add it to 14.930 to see how much basic rate band still remains. It's counted towards that basic rate band limit of 37.7. The 0% starting rate for savings income is not applicable here, as we said, as the non-savings taxable income, 14,930, exceeded £5,000. That was the critical issue there. OK, so hopefully, therefore, no problems with uh, creating that answer for yourself or with understanding the answer that we've now reviewed through. OK, going back to your uh, notes now. We were in this savings income section here on uh, page 7. And what we have now dealt with is the availability of the savings income nil rate band. But we've not yet seen an example where the 0% starting rate band would be available to us. So we had this point that it's only available to taxable savings income if it falls within the first 5,000 of total taxable income. It meant that if the non-savings taxable income was £5,000 or more, you can forget about the 0% starting rate. As we know, tax savings income is taxed at the same rates as non-savings income, listed above the, uh, of course, 20, 40 and 45%. That starting rate uh, of 0% will apply to a maximum 5,000 of taxable savings income, where any part, again, of the taxable savings income falls within the first 5,000 of the total taxable income. If, as we said, the first 5,000 of taxable income consists of non-savings income, then that 0% rate will simply not apply. If applicable, the starting rate is applied first to taxable savings income, followed by the savings income nil rate band, if available, and thereafter the normal rates. Again, probably going to be basic, uh, maybe going up to higher rate. All right, let's have a little look. Yes, I've got an example here for you. A little look at the example. Uh, Again, going back to uh, the uh, example that I had earlier, where I had non-savings and savings income. This time I've cut the numbers in relation to both the non-savings and the interest income to see what happens as regards the availability of this 0% starting rate. So we'd have had employment income, i.e. a salary here, of 15,000. Non-savings and into the total column. Bank deposit interest, 6,000, savings income, and therefore again into the total column. £21,000 of total income, made up of 15 and 6 respectively. Then we have our personal allowance available, of course. What does he go against first? As always, our non-savings income, 
12,570. The self same 12,570 goes against the total. And that will bring us down to our taxable income figures. What have we got? 12,570 from 15,000, so that's 2,430. The 6,000 is untouched on the savings income there. And 12,700, that's 8,430. Quick cross cast, 2,430, 6, 8,430 pounds. Now then, what do we discover here? We can clearly see that we've got taxable income of £8,430 in total, so our hero is a basic rate taxpayer. A basic rate taxpayer with savings income. So if there's enough savings income, we'll enjoy a savings income nil rate band of £1,000. But whereas previously, when we got our non-savings taxable income, this figure here, that figure has been in excess of 5000 meaning that the 0% starting rate will not apply. But now, of course, it doesn't exceed 5,000. So that means that we've got some of the 5,000 pound starting rate band for savings income available to us. And without me showing you, because we've talked through this a number of times now, I would like you to put together your calculation of tax here rather than just watching me do it. Now, remember we said that the starting rate comes in first. It applies on savings income before you deal with the savings income nil rate band. Of course, before you get to that, the more interesting calculation here, you've still got your non-savings income to deal with some £2,430. Clearly, at basic rate, that will be at 20%. Then your savings income. Now, do we have some part of the taxable savings income within the first £5,000 of total taxable income? And yes, we do. It's all down to this figure here, your taxable non-savings income. If that is less than 5000 it means that some of the 5000 0% starting rate available for savings income is now relevant. So you've got to work out what that is. Not difficult, 5,000 to that less 2,430. That's the amount of starting rate band available to you, the 0% starting rate. So that will be zero. Then comes the savings income nil rate band, basic rate taxpayer. So what does that mean? And anything left over is clearly still well within the basic rate band so it will be taxed at 20%. So I'd like you to do that calculation for me, please, and establish the tax liability. And I'll come back to you in a moment, and then we'll uh, have a look at some of the class examples from your study notes. But do that one first for me, please. OK, well, let's see how you fared on this one. I'm hoping uh, you've been successful. You don't know yet, of course. Then first part of our taxable income to tax as ever is non-savings. The non-savings was 2430 at the basic rate band of 20%. Whatever that comes to, that's your first figure of tax. But then, of course, the much more interesting figure of savings income, we can see that the first £5,000 of taxable income is not fully covered by the non-savings income. Only 2430 was savings income, sorry, non savings income there. So, of the starting rate on savings income, of the 0% starting rate on savings income, there remains out of the 5,000 available starting rate band, minus what has used up the first 5,000 of uh, the taxable non savings income there, 2430 leaves us 2,570 of the first 5,000 of taxable income being our savings income. So that gets to enjoy the 0% starting rate. Now we've got 6,000 in total. We've only dealt with 2,570 there. 
our taxpayer, as we saw immediately, was only going to be a basic rate taxpayer. So that meant that we enjoyed the nil rate band of £1,000, this separate savings income nil rate band. And you can either write in here, obviously, I don't see what you write in unless it's on a written question. Uh, nil or 0%, it's one and the same figure. There is no tax to pay. But that's another £1,000 out of the total of £6,000 that you've accounted for. Note again how if the starting rate band is available, any part of that 5000 you use it first. Then you come in with the standard 1000 savings income your rate band, available to a basic rate taxpayer. And then you see what's left over that now, of course, will fall purely and entirely into the basic rate band. We've got £6,000 of savings income. We've accounted for 2570 there, plus 1000 so 3570 leaving, all being well, 2430 in your basic rate band. That is 20%. Do the calculations there on, and that sorts out what is your total taxable uh, tax liability, rather, in relation to your total taxable income. So where we see this combination of the savings income nil rate band and what applies before that if it's applicable the zero percent starting rate in all honesty because it means the numbers are so small you're very unlikely to encounter this within a section c the 15 mark income tax question you are much more likely to encounter this in section a as an objective testing question where this one would be an ideal exercise for that particular uh, section A style of question where you've got the mixture of non-savings and savings and your savings has to go through three bands. That's the remainder of the starting rate, your available savings income nil rate band and then the balance of it in the basic rate band. That's definitely worth a couple of marks in terms of a section A objective testing question. Obviously where they are objective testing questions you're uh, uh, presentation could be, well, as scruffy as mine. You don't need, of course, all of the detailed information going in. You need to know these numbers, but how you represent them is entirely up to you. Again, the examiner doesn't see your uh, workings there. But what is important is that the, your workings are good enough to provide you with the accurate information to go into this tax calculation here. As long as that has worked, then the presentation is irrelevant. Again, in the section C question, adhere, stick to the format of the income tax computation that we have shown to you. Okay, let's go back to the study notes, therefore. And there's a couple of examples here for you now to have a go at on your own. Let's have a look up at them. Example four, calculate Molly's income tax liability for our 21-22 tax year. And this time, there's only one source of income. It's bank interest. She must have a lot of money in the bank of £22,500. There is only savings income. There is no non-savings income. If there is no non-savings income, then the full starting rate band of 5000 will be available to you as well as, of course, being a basic rate taxpayer with this level of income, a full 1,000 savings income nil rate band is also available to you if needed. Anything left over will be at basic rate, such as we saw in the little classwork example we just did. Then move on to example five, where this time we do what I've just done in the example you've seen. We combine some non-savings income, the trading profit, but here 13,500. Now we know we'll apply our personal allowance to that and the resulting figure is going to be considerably less than 5,000 pounds. So there will be a significant amount of 0% starting rate available to you. It won't be the full 5,000 as it would have been in this example, but it will be a very significant number there. We've also got bank interest of 18,000 It'll still mean, if you look at those numbers or uh, that number, 13.5 minus 12.570 and add 18,000, 
you can very clearly see that the amount of total taxable income is going to still leave you well within the basic rate band. So you're a basic rate taxpayer. That sorts out your savings income nil rate band and what the rest of the taxable savings income will be taxed at. So have a go at those two, please. Now, practice on those and then come back to me and we'll quickly go through again the model answers to make sure that you're OK with them. Pause, therefore, at this point. OK, let's see how you got on, therefore, with example four to begin with, and then we'll move to example five. In example four, Molly only had one type of income. It is savings income. There is no non-savings income. Again, here, you don't need your total column. Again, I'm just showing you that's what would otherwise uh, appear. And we only adhere to the full proper pro forma when it's a section C written question. But you've got both savings and total income of 22,500. The personal allowance, given that there isn't any non-savings, will now go against the one and only source of income, the savings income, leaving you £9,930, all of which is taxable savings income. What does that mean? It means that all of the 5,000 starting rate is available to you, the 0% starting rate. Clearly a basic rate taxpayer at that level of taxable income. So we've got the 1,000 savings income nil rate band. That's the first 6,000 of the 9,930 accounted for in our tax calculation, leaving, all being well, 3,930 that's now pushed into that uh, basic rate band and taxed at 20%, giving us our resultant income tax liability. Again, hopefully no worries there. The little notes to you, of course. Molly has no non-savings taxable income, so the full 5,000 0% starting rate was available to us. Molly is a basic rate taxpayer and therefore had the full savings income nil rate band of £1,000. Example 5, well, a little bit more interesting and similar to the class example that I gave you before we did these examples. As we read the question, we discover there is trading income, so we need a non-savings income column. There is bank interest, so we need a savings income column, and then our total. Put the figures in from the question, trading income 13 and a half, and your bank interest 18,000. Deduct the personal allowance, of course, here, directly to begin with from the non-savings income. The non-savings income is bigger than the personal allowance, leaving just a small amount, £930 to be precise, of taxable non-savings income. So what does that mean? It means that all of that 930 as non-savings being within your basic rate band is taxed at 20%. But it also means that because 930 does not exceed 5,000, that the balance of the 5,000 0% starting rate is available to you. So the starting rate 5,000 minus 930 leaves us £4,070 of our taxable savings income, our bank deposit interest, falling within the first 5,000 total taxable income and therefore deserving of the 0% starting rate. Basic rate taxpayer, of course, 18,930, well below 37,700 and therefore the savings income nil rate band of the £4,000 is available to us. That has accounted for 4,070 plus 1,000, 5,070 pounds. Out of the 18,000, what's left over? Hopefully that's 12,930 in the basic rate band and calculate your figure of tax there. Add it to the tax on the non-savings income and you've got, of course, then your income tax liability as required from the question. Again, the explanation. Polly had non-savings taxable income of 930, hence a 0% starting rate band available of £4,070. Also, the £1,000 savings income nil rate band. So now, therefore, whatever combination in a tax year, for us, the 2021-22 tax year, 
of non-savings income and savings income, we should always be able to correctly compute the income tax liability of the taxpayer, applying the relevant correct rates. Firstly, non-savings, and then onto your savings income. But there is, of course, a third possibility as regards the types of income into which we analyse the sources of income, and that's dividend income. So let's again go back to our notes now and see what we've got to do about dividends. Now, thankfully, this is a whole lot simpler than what you have to deal with in terms of the savings income. As we will discover, we know that after taxing, firstly the non-savings and then the savings income, finally, we get to the taxable dividend income. And it will also firstly benefit from a 0% rate. There is a dividend income nil rate band. But this time it's incredibly easy by comparison to what we had to do with the savings income nil rate band. It's the first £2,000 of dividend income received, but is available irrespective of whether dividends fall within the basic rate, higher rate, or additional rate bands. After which, the dividend tax rates will then apply as follows, and they are on your rates and allowances page. But the important thing here is it doesn't now matter whether we're basic rate, whether we pushed into higher rate, whether we're into additional rate. Whatever figure of dividend income you have got, the first £2,000 of that dividend income will be taxed at the 0% rate. It's the dividend income nil rate band. Now, what thereafter are the tax rates? They are these strange numbers here as provided to us on our rates and allowances. Any of the dividend income falling within the basic rate band is taxed at 7.5%. We know the basic rate band limit up to 37 cents. Then above that basic rate band limit and up to the higher rate band limit of 150, we go to 32.5% as the rate to apply to any remaining dividend income within that band. And if we've got so much dividend income that we go above 150,000, we push therefore into the additional rate band then that goes up to 38.1%. Again, remember, just as with savings income, that the dividend nil rate band counts towards the basic and higher rate limits there. We don't just exclude it and say, oh, that's not taxable. Yes, it is taxable, but taxable at a 0% rate. So it counts towards the cumulative total, firstly, of the basic rate band limit of 37.7%, if necessary to the higher rate band limit of £150,000. So dividend income, a whole lot easier for us, or indeed now for you, to deal with. And let's therefore throw ourselves immediately into a further example, which as luck would have it here, example six. What do we have to do? This time, calculate Daisy's income tax payable. If it's payable, we'll know that we'll be dealing with a salary, we'll be given the PAYE, and that £1,400, as it is here, will be deducted from the tax liability. So you've still got to work out the tax liability, but then to derive the requirement of the problem, the income tax payable figure. We read the information in the question. As we've just seen, we have a salary that is non-savings income. We've got receive £10,000 of bank deposit interest. That is savings income. And finally, dividend income here. Well, that's dividend income, of course. And therefore, all three types of this income exist. So, you're going to do this. Put together your normal income tax computation. Again, you don't have to be too neat and tidy in terms of this exercise here but get your structure sorted. You have non-savings, savings and dividend COL. We've got a salary of 19,500 into your non-savings income, 10,000 to your savings income, finally just 1,000 in our tax year to the dividend income. 
What do we then do? Deduct the personal allowance. Where do we deduct it? Firstly, from non-savings. That's 19 and a half. The personal allowance is just 12,570. So you will have some taxable non-savings income. Depending on how much taxable non-savings income, as we've just been talking about, sorry, taxable uh, savings income you have, um, and taxable non-savings income as well, sorry, that will dictate whether or not that 0% starting rate band is available to you. Looking at those numbers, 19.5 less 12.570, that should tell you about whether or not the taxable non-savings income has indeed exceeded £5,000. And if that were the case, then there'd be no starting rate. But of course, you will have to know whether you're a basic or a higher rate taxpayer. Pretty obvious here it's a basic rate taxpayer to work out, of course, that therefore it's £1,000 worth of savings income your rate band that the taxpayer will enjoy. And finally then, the new bit, dividend income, well, it's only £1,000. You still have to show that on your tax calculation, but of course there's a 2,000 dividend income nil rate back. So all of that falls into it. So the tax on your dividend income will be 1,000 at 0%. Should be, I hope, straightforward for you. Can you have a go at that example, please? So pause now and then come back to me again when you have uh, derived your answer to this example. OK, time to review through again, therefore, and see what you've got now in your answer to example six. And uh, got my fingers crossed, everything went well for you on this one. Again, from the information of the question, we established we had non-savings income, i.e. the employment income of £19,500 into the non-savings column. We've got bank deposit interest, hence savings income here, £10,000. We've also got some dividend income, so for the first time now, as we know, the dividend column comes into play, but that figure is just £1,000 there. Take the personal allowance, as we said earlier, there are personal allowance from the non-savings income, and that gives you taxable non-savings income of 6930 One, it means that it is, of course, all within the basic rate band of 377 it also means that because it's uh, in excess of £5,000, that there'll be no 0% starting rate available in relation to your savings income. So the 6930, down it comes into your tax calculation, non-savings, 6930 at 20%. We've got £10,000 of taxable savings income, no 0% starting rate, but we do, of course, because we are a basic rate taxpayer based on the total taxable income, well within the basic rate band limit, basic rate taxpayer, so the savings income does to begin with, enjoy the savings income nil rate band of a full £1,000. That's one out of 10, leaving 9,000 within the basic rate band, and that therefore will be at 20%. Calculate your tax accordingly. The dividends are only £1,000, that does not exceed 2000 so it wouldn't matter what that figure of uh, taxable income is there, whether you were basic, whether you were higher, whether you were additional rate taxpayer, you always get the full £2,000 of dividend income nil rate band available to you. So all of what that 1000 is at 0%. As we want the income tax payable, not just the income tax liability, it's got to be, of course, the case that you're dealing with employment income now, uh, upon which PAYE was deducted but at source by the employer and paid over to Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs on your behalf, the taxpayer's behalf. Pick the figure up as it would be given within the question there, and then that leaves you with your bottom line income tax payable. We've got, again, notes here in relation to the lack of availability of the 0% starting rate for savings income, the availability of the full £1,000 worth of savings income nil rate band, and because we always get 2,000 dividend income nil rate band, any dividend figure such as this, less than £2,000, will all be at the nil rate. 
Okay, going back to our study notes now. You, yes, you, don't you love it when you get to do things rather than just watching me? Example seven, we're back with Daisy again, recalculating Daisy's income tax payable, this time assuming that the salary is 37,500, upon which PAYE, income tax deducted at source by the employer, amounted to £5,000. Bank deposit interest, 13,000, dividend income, again 1,000. Salary, non-savings, bank deposit interest, savings, dividend income, obviously dividend income. We've got the set. What we also have is a lot more income. 37 and a half, plus 13, plus one, this taxpayer, Daisy, this time is going to be a higher rate taxpayer. What impact will that therefore have in relation to your answer? Again, over to you, set your columns up, allocate the income accordingly, take away your personal allowance where you always deduct it first, get your taxable non-savings income and tax at the relevant rate. Here, I think you can see that that 37.5 minus the 12,570 means, of course, you're well within the basic rate band, so it will all be at basic rate. Then, of course, what do you do with the 13,000? What's the availability of? Is there any 0% starting rate available? No, no, there isn't. Not with that level of taxable non-savings income. Do we have any savings income in your rate band? If so, what is it? Is it a 1,000 or is it... £500, he says suggestively. And finally, the dividend income. Well, again, at 1000 it won't matter that we are now a higher rate taxpayer. It's still going to be at nil rate. So, could you do that one for me now? And again, we'll have a quick look at the answer to that before then bringing this particular session again to a close. OK, well, let's see how you got on, therefore, with example seven. Again, picking the information from the question, we saw that we had employment income, hence the need for our non-savings income column, bank interest, therefore savings income, and now finally dividend income, and therefore the dividend income column. Take the figures from the question, put them into your answer, and get the total income figures, from which the personal allowance is then to be deducted are 12,570. As ever, where do we deduct it from? we take it away from the non-savings income figure first of all, which of course is more than sufficient to fully absorb the amount of personal allowance available to us and leave us with taxable income, here taxable non-savings income of 24,930. What does that mean? It's less than 37.7. So all of that therefore is within your basic rate band of 20%. It also meant that in relation to taxing your savings income there of £13,000, that because 24,930 is considerably bigger than £5,000, that there is no starting rate available to tax that 13000 of taxable savings income. There's no starting rate. We do, however, then have to look for the savings income nil rate band. And as long as you're not an additional rate taxpayer, no, we're not an additional rate taxpayer. That figure is not in excess of £150,000, but it is bigger than 37.7. Therefore, we're not a basic rate band. We're a higher rate taxpayer. As a higher rate taxpayer, the savings income nil rate band, therefore, falls to five hundred pounds. So that's the first five hundred, in which case we now can see we're a higher rate taxpayer. So how much basic rate band remains available to us? Well, we've already used the basic rate band limit, 24,930. We've now also used, remember, the savings income nil rate bands, the starting rates if applicable, or count towards the basic rate band limit of 37,700. So we got 500. So 
If you take 24,930 plus 500, that's what, 25,430, and take that away from your basic rate band limit of 37,700. So how much of the remaining amount of taxable savings income we've accounted for 500, there's still 12,500 to account for. How much of that 12,500 falls within the basic rate band limit of £37,700. How do we get that figure? 377 minus the 24,930 and minus the 500. Now put that through your calculator and hopefully you get that to be a remaining basic rate band limit of 12,270. Savings income within the basic rate band is going to be taxed at 20%. But we've now taxed £500 plus 12,270, that's 12,770, out of £13,000 of taxable savings income. So it still leaves a balance of 230 uh, there to be taxed. We've now pushed that 230 out of the basic rate band and up into the higher rate band. And the consequence of it, of course, is a much higher figure of higher rate tax rate. It's a 40% rate, double the 20% basic rate. That would establish the amount of tax in relation to the savings income. The dividend income, well, we knew all along that that dividend income being top sliced, but it wouldn't matter whether, as here, it all falls into the higher rate band whether it all fell into or partly fell into the basic rate band and then some into the higher rate or whether it was up in additional rate. There is always a full £2,000 worth of dividend income new rate band irrespective of the level of taxpayer that you may be. It's easier to deal with therefore than it is with the uh, savings income new rate band and of course the starting rate of, uh, for savings income as well. It's a whole lot easier, this dividend income nil rate band. So all of that 1,000 will be at 0%. Put the numbers together, get your income tax liability, and if as needed here, and for this they must provide you with a PAYE figure, if they want income tax payable, pick up the PAYE, not a thing you'll ever have to compute, just a figure to take from the question, and deduct it to end up with the amount of income tax payable there. And again, with notes as regards why it is there is no starting rate, why we do have a savings income nil rate ban, but it's only £500 there. Again, check through those calculations, make sure that you are happy where all those numbers come from. Remember there that 12 to 70 is how much of the basic rate band limit of 37.7 still remained to you after you'd accounted for the non-savings and after you'd accounted for the savings income nil rate band. Okay. If we're all okay with those numbers, just one uh, final bit. Uh, again, just adapting this question just a little bit, just before I leave you alone, until the next session. I want you this time to still pick up a non-savings income figure of £24,930, so that will be the same, of taxable income here, so it's still 24930 But you're, and again, I stress here that these are the figures of taxable income, we have, as you can see, deducted that personal allowance firstly, as we always do from non-savings income. So it's again 24,930. But this time we're going to play around with our figures of uh, uh, savings income and dividend income. This time we'll reduce down the savings income to £2,000 and significantly increase the dividend income up to 13000 now, if we cross cast on that, we've got 13 plus 2 is 15, on to 24,930. So the total now, I think, is 39,930. A critical figure, of course, to tell you that you are a higher rate taxpayer, 
because you're a higher rate taxpayer, in relation to that savings income, there'll be a savings income nil rate band, but it'll only be £500. So to begin with, it's straightforward enough. That 24,930 being the first 24,930, well within the basic rate band limit, is going to be taxed at 20%. It doesn't change. We know that because we are a higher rate taxpayer, that we've still got the £500 there, savings income nil rate ban. That is still available to us. And that would just leave only £1,500 that remains. And that clearly does not take you in total as yet above 37.7. It's within the basic rate band limit of 37.7. You can see there, 24,930 plus 2,000 would only be 26,930. So the remaining 1,500 of this 2,000, well, that will be at basic rate. Then we come to the dividend income of 13,000, this taxable dividend income. And that becomes, well, a bit more interesting, shall we say. To begin with, as ever, we always enjoy, irrespective of whatever that taxable income figure may be, we enjoy the 2000 dividend income nil rate band. But then, of course, the remainder, we've got 2000 out of 13,000 there. So the remaining 11,000 pounds that we're talking in terms of, well, that is partly, mostly within the basic rate band. But some of it, of course, is then going to fall within the, uh, the higher rate band. So we've got to establish exactly how much of that is split between what's in the remaining basic rate band, what is therefore pushed into the higher rate band, after accounting for the fact that we've got a 2000 dividend income nil rate band. So the 24,930 non-savings tax first, all at basic rate. The 2,000 savings income, 500 savings income nil rate band. Again, why? Because we're a higher rate taxpayer based on that total taxable income. That leaves 1,500 of savings income still to be taxed that falls within the basic rate band, so it is taxed at 20%. Then the full 13,000, well, of that 13,000 dividend income, 2,000 is going to be taxed at the dividend income nil rate band. And once you've accounted for that, plus that, plus your 2,000 of your 13,000, how much basic rate band does that still give you? Because we know that when we've added in this 13,000 to the non-savings and savings income, it's put you up to 39,930, so we are a higher rate taxpayer. So we then have to apply both the uh, dividend income tax rate to that which falls within the basic rate band. Most of it, that's that 7.5% rate, a quite friendly rate there, I'm sure you would agree, but then the higher 32.5% rate to the part of the taxable dividend income that falls within the higher rate. And I'd like you to have a go at that for me now, please. Here are your revised figures of taxable income, 24,000, 2,000 and 13,000. Proceed to tax those taxable income figures using the available rates and allowances. Over to you. OK, let's see how you got on there for you don't know yet until you, well, see the answer here as to what that to answer should be. What we did, of course, was to have a little change. We kept the non-savings taxable income at 24,930 and then we seriously reduced the savings income down to 2,000 and seriously increased the taxable dividend income up to 13,000. The 24,930, as we said, was going to be within the basic rate band, so taxed at 20%. The savings income of 2,000, because based on that total taxable income, we're a higher rate taxpayer, we get the savings income nil rate band of 500. Of course, with that level of taxable non-savings income, there was never going to be any starting rate, 0% starting rate. But we still got that savings income nil rate band. That was 500, 
out of 2,000, clearly the remaining 1,500 is well within the basic rate band, so it is taxed at 20%. So we've got the taxation of the savings income. Again, calculations which by now we've done many times over when dealing with non-savings and savings. What has now become uh, more challenging is the dividend income. To begin with, no challenge at all. The first 2,000 of this 13,000 is the dividend income nil rate uh, that applies to it. But then, of course, as we know, we are a higher rate taxpayer. So we tax there 2,000 out of 13,000. The remaining £11,000 worth of taxable dividend income will be mostly within the basic rate band, the bit from 37.7 down to whatever 24,930 plus 500 plus 1500 plus 2000. All of those numbers there have counted towards the basic rate band limit of 37.7. And if you get your calculators out, as hopefully you did, that left you, therefore, with a balance of £8,770 of the dividend income, still within the basic rate band, and therefore suffering tax at 7.5%. That, therefore, meant that we were still left with £2,230 worth of the 13000 taxable dividend income to tax, and that has been pushed up into the higher rate, where you see a very significant change in tax rates from 7.5% up to 32.5%. And we work out whatever that comes to, add them all together, and that will be your revised income tax liability. Again, you knew that was going to be the case because 39,930, 37,700 was the basic rate band limit. You take that away, that's 2,230, and that top 230 of your taxable income that falls within the higher rate band, you know to be the top slice of your taxable income, which is always dividend income there. Okay. Again, before next time, make sure you go back through those exercises there, and then we'll push on further into our study of the income tax computation and look at some of the more interesting things that may happen to that. Playing around mostly with stuff that we've seen before, but looking at certain other issues that make those even more interesting than they already are. Is that possible? I hear you say.